You guys can get in position if you want. Oh, no, I I'm just going to do it now. Jump it down. You can come up, Mr. Ed, first, right? Or are you coming up first? Together? Together. We'll probably come up together. together. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right, come up together. Don't overwhelm us, though. We'll strengthen you maybe one talk at a time. I need all the help I can get. All right, we're ready, guys. Okay, so we're starting the transfer station. Do you know that, Annette George? Um, no, but I was thinking this is just a guy who's in person. Oh, yeah. Nice well, sure. thanks, Ed, George. Yeah. So. All right, Ed. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Okay. Well, I don't want to be doom and gloom. I want to not to be. We're still feeling the effects of China and everything that they've done with recycling and all that over the last year. Um, You've got my narrative, I think, there. Um, That's kind of right. It's, it's, there, it's, it's, it's like this one. They were in the order of presentation. Yeah, I know. I kind of messed it up. What's up, this? This one, right? Starts with update from? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, got it. Yep, okay. I like the copy, I did find a couple of typos on it in the, in the numbers side of it. So as I get out through it, I'll give you the new. Okay. The, the spreadsheet. Is correct. Okay. Some of the numbers on the narrative are off. Um, so, what I'd like to propose, and what I'm going to get is two different things. I realize this, but we'll start out here. Um, last year, I think we did a 2% raise mm -hmm. to everyone. Mm -hmm. um, proposing three or whatever you folks decide to do this year. That's I probably could have left that off and just left that for whatever you folks want to do. But that's kind of where I'd like to see it go. Mm -hmm. um, the starting rate for the employees over there right now is $11 an hour. Um, I'd like to work in the next couple of years to get that up 12 to 13. Uh, you can't even flip hamburgers now for $12 an hour practically. So, I mean, it's not brain surgery over there, but for being the contact of the people, you know, they, they do like what they're doing. Uh, you know, it, it wouldn't hurt to get that up some. They're also extremely helpful. Yes. Which, For, yeah. you know, yeah, they, yeah. you have to give them that. They're all going to smile on their face. They're right there to help, you know, take the bags out of cars and yeah. help with the recycling and all that. So. What it, you're saying it's below market. What is the market rate? Right? It should be somewhere up around 13. Okay. Yeah, so we're a couple of bucks low right now. Okay. Uh, you know, as a starting. As a starting pay. Now, is starting pay is that based on a part-time position or a full-time? position? That's based on the part-time. On they, a part-time. Yeah, unless sixteen hours a week that they work. Okay. Yeah. yeah. They work fifteen. I think. Okay. So. For part-time employees. Yeah, do all time. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. So, um, I do have one employee over there. I'm not going to use any names, but I got one guy that has been there four plus years. Mm -hmm. uh, pretty obvious when you go over. You'll See the face we've seen all, all along. Uh, last year he did get the two percent, which brought it to eleven twenty-two. Uh, he also works a little bit with us at Highway, so he bounces back and forth, which poses a little bit of a problem because he's at eleven twenty-two over there, but starting pay at Highway is fourteen thirty-four, uh, thirty-five. So to where a transfer station he. I won't say he gets a cut in pay because that's where he started, mm -hmm. you know. So, but I'd like to get him up to the fourteen thirty-five. Um, in a one-time shot. In a one-time shot, where he does work back and forth, he does hold a CDL truck license. He does run the equipment over there. He can run the skid steer. He can run the, work the balers. Uh, he comes in right now. Um, I won't say on his own because he always gets paid to come in, but. He comes in, he helps me make the bales of plastic. Uh, he makes the, he's, he works in the cardboard building, does all that. Um, and he can pretty much do everything over there in my absence. Because I'm 90% I'm over at Highway. Mm -hmm. You know, I oversee what's going on over there, and I do that you know, as much as I can. <coughs> but I'd like to try to get him up if we could. Um, it's a difference of. I didn't bring the note that had the actual increase, but it's around, I think it's under $2,500 to get him up. Uh, How many hours is that one? It's, it, it's still, that's still based on 16 hours. Yeah. Um, 
guys can write down the actual increase. But there is a difference between a highway worker and a transfer station worker. There is. There is. But he is also one that can flip flop both ways. His, in his past life, he worked for the state of New Hampshire Department of Transportation, mm -hmm. doing road work. Mm -hmm. uh, so he can help us do flagging. He can help us drive trucks. Um, He's been on call. Yeah. Yeah. It's a difference of two thousand six hundred four dollars. There you go. Year. Okay. So. Okay. Thank and you. I did reflect that in my budget. If you, you know, if you wish to, to do that. So then. Uh, you know, that 35,000, 56, it and, is in there. And 3% for the others. Yes. And I did not figure 3% for him because if he's going to get that, he's not going to get 3% on top of that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. And as far as the 3%, that's, like I said, that's totally up to you folks. You know, 1%, 2, 3, 10, whatever. So, but the number is. I, that I must have, that must have slipped out. I'm sorry. <laughs> I also have a habit of only being serious for so long, <laughs> so just ask George, drives him nuts. So, but that's, I mean, he's the one employee that, over there, that has been there the longest and is capable of doing everything, including helping us at highway, so. So if he's been there the longest and it's $11 an hour, yeah. why is he only up 22 cents than above uh, everyone else? Other than last year, I can't tell you. Because the starting rate was only eleven dollars an hour for two years now, so everybody who was pre-existing got bumped up to eleven dollars an hour. Yeah. Nobody else that's there now experienced that, and then he got one across the board increase since then. I don't know what it was prior to last year. Probably ten seventy two and ten fifty before that. The high the, the base pay used to be the hiring the the entering set the entering wage used to be ten dollars and fifty cents. Mm -hmm. And then it was bumped up to eleven dollars. Mm -hmm. So he probably started at ten fifty mm -hmm. and went to ten seventy two and then got bumped up to eleven and then eleven twenty two. Okay. So he just he didn't We've always given the transfer station employees raises, like everyone else in town. Whatever they cross okay. the board is, okay. yes. Okay. So, that's where I'll leave that. You know, he, mm -hmm. like I say, he does, he can do it all. Mm -hmm. So, as far as that thing over there, and assist us as well, so. Um, moving down, supplies. Basically, on my narrative, I just went over the things that I'm seeing increases in. So, uh, supplies are up. I've got to buy, in most cases, I have to buy these large boxes to put the paper in. Uh, they're 10 bucks a piece used. So they're called a Gaylord. They're about four foot square. Uh, so, we get those baling wire, just the wire to, to, to the cardboard bales and the plastic bales and aluminum bales. It's about hundred. It's a hundred bucks uh, per roll or per group of what you, what you buy. Um, training. Can we go back there? Sure. Why did you like double it or over double it? You went up three hundred dollars. Mostly in the boxes. Uh, we also got to buy the boxes to put the glass bulbs in as well. So you uh, you didn't have to do that before. We did. But I don't, I don't know where the numbers were hidden before. I shouldn't say hidden, but I've broken out a lot of things differently, so it's more transparent and it's there. Okay. Uh, so we didn't used to be buying boxes for mixed paper because it was part of single stream. Right. The boxes for bulbs, um, on the slim occasions they happened, probably came from highway supply. Are you talking like fluorescent bulbs? Is yes. That long? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Until they get shipped out. And then the baling wire is just an increased expense because we're bailing more than we used to bail. Okay. Right. right. Yeah, I, yeah, I forgot the part about, yeah, we didn't need those Gaylords. We had, we needed them, but they were for electronics. Yeah. For any, anything like that. So that we, was less. Yeah, we were yeah. using, I don't know, maybe 10 to 15 a year, probably mm -hmm. 15 maybe. Mm -hmm. And the company that we got those from, that we deal with that, it's uh, North Coast. There are what's my, mm -hmm. They would exchange them. So if I gave them five, they give me five. Oh, so you didn't have to pay the second time. Right. Okay. Right. 
You have to buy the first five. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. But okay. for the paper, the mixed paper, we do have to buy those. Because once they're gone, the majority of them are gone. Mm -hmm. And we have to buy them back again. So, because they end up going to different places, not always the same recycling facility. Okay. So, anything else there? Huh? I just want to go back for a minute. I'm sorry, sure. Ed. The, um, your spreadsheet didn't calculate payroll taxes correctly. So, payroll tax is based on the figure that Ed is providing is $2,682. $2,682. Um, which is an increase of $272. This information I didn't have. You so. didn't have it. I, no. I apologize. It just didn't, you know, the, the, the 2410, um, $272. Okay, thank you. The 24, um, it, you know, you'll see that the payroll taxes are the same as the previous year. They just didn't get adjusted. Okay. okay. Which will adjust, but that'll make the bottom line different. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, training, since we had this right now. Everybody that works at the transfer station by New Hampshire state law has to have a certificate uh, to work there. In other words, they've, they've gone, they've taken their eight hour class, they've passed the test at the end of it, and they, you know, they have that. The class, I don't believe, costs us anything. Typically not, although it depends on what the option is that we choose. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's, yeah, it's, the, but it's the class, it's the operator's license that they have to have. Right now, everyone over there has it, including George and myself. Okay. So, now in order to keep that, you have to have um, I believe it's three hours of training every year. Doesn't sound like much, and it really isn't. It's a couple of meetings at uh, NRRA, Northeast Regional Recycling, whatever it stands for. Uh, they're the they're the the outfit that we use to uh, ship a lot of the things that we ship. Plastics, cardboard. Uh, they all they help with uh, finding homes for all that and regulatory information for us and a number of different things. So it's two. It, you know, it's going going to their office twice because you get an hour and a half of credit each. Uh, I do. There is a. They do have a conference in Manchester every year, and I've been sending two people. Uh, last year. Nobody won't mail it. Last year it was just me because it was all brand new to me. So last year was me. This past year it was myself and Paul Mattel that went. Uh, next year, I'm ho hopefully it'll be myself and Paul Eames going. Uh, take someone different every year, but I'll, I like to go every year. There's a lot of good information there. Uh, so that does cost to go. So there's a there is an increase in there for for dues and, and conferences. Uh, it's up $290. I base that on uh, just taking, you know, taking an extra person up there and some additional training or an additional hire if we need to get them some additional training. So. The phone is now part of the highway, so we're eliminating the phone budget of $400. $20. So that's come on. MSW, municipal solid waste. Um, I can lower that number a little bit only because we're we've we've taken glass out of it. Well glass was part of single stream, so it never ended up in there. Um, Partly because of the recycling effort. We've been going back and forth the last couple of days, uh, Caroline and myself, looking at numbers. And that and the uh, recycling side of things, or the demo side of things, it's a, I won't say it's a shot in the dark, it's an educated shot in the dark. Mm -hmm. uh, we have had some significant increases this year in our recycling and, our, and in, our, uh, in our demo. And the uh, MSW, uh, they're up. Stupidly, I did not bring the note with me that had the uh, increases on it. But uh, the projected, well, let me go by six months, because that's what I worked on today for both last year and this year. And we're up about 
almost 40 ton this year from last. Okay, 30, right now it's 38.50 a ton to get rid of. So, you know, that's up a couple thousand dollars. Uh, and that's just six months. So I tried to project this out without getting too heavy handed on it, but try to get it to a number that I felt would carry us through the year. Then again, I thought last year's number would carry us through the year, and we're, we're looking at a little bit of a shortfall there. But, but it was but, more expensive to do what we're doing now versus single stream, right? I believe so it. So the change in that the would whole, for this. Yeah. Yeah, I can't, coverage, right? yeah, it's very hard to do apples and apples this year versus last year. Because you changed it. Yeah. Yeah, we got rid right. of the single screen. We went to. But even though we're overexpending, we would overextend, overexpend way more if we were still the silver single stream. Right. So we're saving money over what we could be doing. Right. Um, but demos up about fifty percent, and and we're doing so we're doing a lot more hauls. Hauling is about fully expended for demo and MSW for the year now. So that means it's probably going to be a third. No. It the demo is um, based on building permits that were done and people are bringing their demo to the transfer station, right? Isn't that what that is? Yeah, it's, 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 it's something it's you're doing and you're bringing rebuild, it. Rebuilding a deck, yeah. all your old deck materials, uh, could be a couch, mm -hmm. could be mattresses. Oh, you, oh, you consider that a demo as it's well? It's all part of the demo. Okay. Mattresses and, and things like that. Are oh, considered a demo, demo yeah, as well? Yeah. But oh, it's okay. not directly correlated to building permits. No, I, yeah. Yeah, I know, but I wondered if but, our building permits were higher this year yeah. than they were last year. Possibly, but, but there are two things. It, it, it's, it's worth a, I'll let Ed speak to it, but it's mm -hmm. worth a complete restructuring of how we handle demo. I have okay. a, down through here, I got a little note on that. And, okay. And might, might help with the income side of things okay. with the demo. Excuse me. So the MSW, uh, I've got it from 43,000, dropping that to 37. Uh, so there was, you know, I, and I've gone over those numbers numerous times, wondering why, but uh, I think part of it is the recycling. So I've looked at all the numbers from last year on the MSW, added them all up, multiplied the numbers out. Um, I, I I think the 37 is gonna is gonna be an okay number, and that's just a disposal. That's not the hauling of it. It's just just to get rid of it. So uh, I did put a little bit of a buffer in there. So I do feel that that will hold steady. Um, could you explain for me, please? I don't um, know like what lamprey means. Municipal sure. solid waste, I imagine, is just like a trash bag. MSW, yeah, MSW is anything, your kitchen waste, basically. Anything that you throw in the Compact. the top of the hill, yes. if yeah. you will, left or right, mm -hmm. uh, whichever one we use, and anything you throw in there. Okay. Just, those fully enclosed containers that packs it in. Mm -hmm. That's the MSW. And what's tipping? Tipping is, is the fee you pay to have it to get rid of the per time okay. charge. Yep. I see. Yep. Okay. And Lamprey is a regional cooperative that we are a member of. Lamprey, there are 13 communities, have a contract together with waste management that allows us to bring and requires that we bring all of our trash to waste management in Rochester. Got it. Okay, cool. Yep. Thanks. And by having that contract, uh, once a month I get a printout from NRRA that has all the all the the fees or what they pay, what we could get for income for what we get rid of. Um, the MSW side is anywhere between seventy and one hundred and twenty dollars a ton on the open market. We're locked in. At right now, we're locked in at sixty-eight fifty a ton. Next year, it goes up about sixty-nine fifty. So you're locked in for an entire year. We're locked in for another seven years, aren't we? Yes, but incremental with, increase. Yes, right, next, but yeah. is it a dollar increase a year? Um, I don't know that it exactly is. I have okay, to. It is going to sixty nine so. fifty for MSW and demo right. next year. We pay the same for both, mm -hmm. so which is really a, a good deal. Mm -hmm. You know, 
None of it's a good deal, but it's <laughs> but, but halfway they, protected. But they can do that because they have so many communities that are part of it, right? Is well, that because why? we got this 10-year contract that right. requires and mandates that we're sending all our trash there, so they have a guaranteed certain amount of business. Right, yeah. so that, that's why you're getting that. If you just did one on your own, if we tried to you do might one be on in our trouble. Own. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Oh, yeah, you'd be yeah. paying a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, the... So on, on the NSW side, as a rule, we send one per week. One of those cans per week gets dumped. Uh, that's monitored by the guys that are that are up there collecting the trash. They hit the button to contact it in. There's a gauge they watch the pressure. Uh, when the when the when it gets up into the, the high zone and it says we're full, that's how they tell. So those cans go full when they go, and the average is about 11 tons per can. And we've had nines, we had, I think we had one eight, but we've had, I mean, no, we've had nines, we've had some twelves and thirteens. The average is right around, right around eleven. So, so those, those, that is the absolute best way of knowing when they're full. Mm -hmm. Those, those definitely go full. Not that anything else doesn't either, but those, those we know. So that's why it's a little bit easier to, to project that out and predict what it's going to be. Um, There's no fee per load bringing the, it's just per ton, right? It's per ton, yeah, but it does cost us uh, $225 to have it hauled. Okay. That's per, per well, haul, yeah. whether it's the MSW or whether it's the uh, uh, the demo. Okay. So. In which you can pick your own provider for hauling. Yes. You just, it yeah. has to go in. Yeah, Lamprey did have their own company, yeah, their own the hauler. Yeah, truck went bad, right, yeah. The two things went bad, the gentleman doing it and the truck, yeah. so. Yeah, so we use, uh, right now we use Triano mm -hmm. out of South Pole and Westbrook, mm -hmm. somewhere like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and they become a hauler last July. Uh, it's worked out really well. They're right there when I call them. Uh, I've had a couple of times this past year where I had to call them with my begging voice. <laughs> and, and they were very accommodating, mm -hmm. took care of what we needed, came right down. Mm -hmm. uh, they do haul usually within 24 hours. So I, tomorrow afternoon I'll be calling them. Once I know at the end of it, at noon time tomorrow, I'll know what our demos look like. I know right now my lower MSW is full. But I won't call them until they can come and possibly make two hauls in a day. So tomorrow afternoon, afternoon time, I'll know what our demos look like, whether I get to have them dumped before Saturday or not. And I'll call them tomorrow afternoon. They'll be here either Thursday or Friday and haul them. So. Let's see. Yeah. So anyway, we average we average two and a half hauls per week. That's what I'm using as an average number. So some weeks we haul three. We'll haul the we'll haul the, the MSW and we'll haul two demos. Some weeks we'll haul the MSW and no demos. Some weeks we'll haul one demo. So but we always haul an MSW. I think we had I should say I think we had twice this past year that we didn't and and it wasn't quite full. So I wasn't going to ship it out without making sure. And they may only go two hours on a Saturday and it's full. Mm -hmm. But the other one's empty. Mm -hmm. So and one empty one will take home right through Saturday with no issues whatsoever. So. Um, let's see. And then okay, down to uh, recycling hauling. I've got a thousand dollars. Proposed thousand dollars. That's for hauling uh, the plastic and the mixed paper. That number may or may not work, based on a conversation I had about four o'clock this afternoon. I've got a lot of plastic over there that's getting just about ready to go. So I called an RRA to find out what what's the pricing, what's it going to look like. Um, a lot of these companies are charging now a flat four hundred dollars to haul. I had paper haul, mixed paper haul last week. Uh, they hauled, I don't have the tonnage number, uh, but it was, it was $400 to have that hauled. Uh, the plastic, I was not impressed with this afternoon, and I got that, like I say, before I wasn't able to update this. The plastic that we have right now, it's one through seven plastic, so it's everything there is. 
they quoted me four cents per pound to get rid of it. Because ones and twos we can get paid for. One through seven is a cost. And three to seven would be a cost if I pulled the ones and twos out. But right now it's all mixed. So it's four cents a pound. Doesn't sound like much to you add it out. It's eighty dollars a ton. Our trash is sixty-eight fifty a ton. It's cheaper to it's cheaper to throw it away, but you're not recycling. It's a double-edged sword. Yeah. So. Do you have tax credits for recycling? I don't know. I don't believe so. No, I haven't seen anything to that effect. But we're recycling, which is we are recycling. Not, we have a recycling yeah. facility, right? But if plastic went in there, I mean, well, the, the flip side yeah. is if I take it and I put the, I, if we decide, okay, we're not going to pay the eighty dollars plus the four hundred edition, but uh, per ton, and we throw it away. Now we've upped the sixty, the, the MSW the yeah. cost. Yeah. So. Or so we're the next one and twos. I was going to say, that's the next, say that's one and twos. That's what we, said. That's what we exactly yeah. were working on. We, we brainstormed like that. About four o'clock this afternoon, I got the email from from Heather at NIRA, and this is the girl that you and I met with. And it originally came back at five cents, and I said, could, she had said if it was bailed. I said, well, wait a minute, it's bailed. Well, it dropped a penny. So you save twenty bucks a ton, which a ton that's significant. So, uh, so the the next step is is to split it and try to get our folks to pull the ones and twos out. What is a one and two? Yeah, I'm sorry. I I don't know. Know. I'm still learning all this. Yeah, <laughs> ones and twos. That's yeah. Yeah. The content of HPD. Yes. Yeah. So is typically, it like the laundry ones. Milk jugs. Yeah. Laundry bottles. Yeah. Uh, I know there's some others in there. I don't believe it's your. It's your more heavier ones, yes. right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, like your pull and spring water bottles, I wouldn't be better. Don't think that's no. Okay. That's, so that's those the, are the ones that's that are the, the PTE seven. Yeah. 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 And okay. that's a yeah. That's a high price year. Yeah. But Same it's more. at restaurants sometimes when you'll see they'll break out like recycling plastic, but then they'll say water bottles in this one mm -hmm. because yeah. it's more expensive. They'll just yeah. probably just throw they'll it. They'll throw it. Yeah. 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 So it's more you have your laundries yes. and all of those kind of yeah, things. Yeah, they actually can make different things out of that. It's more bulk and it's, it, like you said, it's heavier. Mm -hmm. so, um, and it is, it can be colored bottles, the mm -hmm. colored laundry bottles. Yeah. So they don't have to be clear. Mm -hmm. So now in breaking it out, we got to make the place for it, which I think we can do. Well, you would, you would still do the other ones? Well, that would be the thing. Um, what is the cost of three through seven alone? If you throw it away, it's going to be sixty-eight fifty. Right. If you throw it the other way, and that's a, that's something I haven't got an email back yet on. Like I said, this was all late this afternoon. I emailed her yesterday. Yeah, yesterday morning to try to get these numbers just to see what it was going to cost to get rid of that. So I got to find out three, you know, three through seven. My guess is it's going to be the four cents. It may even be higher because. The company that's accepting the one through seven can't pull out the ones and twos. Right. So they got nothing in there to they've got to find a home for three through seven. So So you still have to bail it though too. Yes. If you save both of them. You yeah. don't have two different bails, so right. to say. Um, right. So I'll have more information on that as we move forward here a little bit yeah. in the next day or two. But you possibly should probably do your recycling back to what it was. I would Thing. To get back to the well, I don't know. Yeah, and like I, I, I said, don't. that was a number I got today, and that was like, oh boy, you know. So, I mean, we have a little bit of time, so we, we still got to find wait. out. Yeah, that's what we had to wait. You know, that's if the they're other throwing thing. it away, if they're throwing it away. They're it throwing away. You're bailing. If they're taking, if they're taking the three through, through sevens and tossing, and tossing it, it and weighing out the good, yeah, because we're bailing it, which costs us time and money, yeah. and then. Yeah. We're costing We're more. We're waiting to find out that. Okay. Yes. Would, they, would they tell you that? Sometimes. They will. Yeah, they, they, yeah. NRA will. Yeah. Okay. They're, they're real good. Yeah. Because, I mean, it doesn't make sense. If, they, if they're going to throw it away, they might, people might as well put we it in the We just might as well throw away yeah. as well, okay? Because you're wasting more time by bailing right. it for one. Right. So just, just bail, bail your bigger ones, yep. your, yep. your other numbers yep. there. Um, yeah, I mean, we have some time. So you can yep. get us better answers mm -hmm. within the next week. And I will. 
um, yeah. whenever you go, or at least give it through to Caroline and sure. let us know. But one way or the other, or you can come back and see us too. Sure. But um, but uh, yeah, we, we'll just leave it the way it is right now and just okay. say follow up. Okay. Yep. All right. So for clarity, are we moving that back to 2,500? I would say let's wait and see what he has to say. All right. Because okay. it might. Be, we may have to increase one other one if we're going to throw it's it away. Fine. I just want exactly. to make sure, you know, so yeah. let's we'll find out MSW before, but we'll see what he has right now. Okay. Okay. We're yeah. also not sure about if the MSW went up because some people are not recycling. You don't know right. that in dark bags. Yeah, that's no, true. Not yeah. Well, but, that's true. That's but the true. flip is we're still, I mean, we're still only sending one can a week. Mm -hmm. So prior to me taking three, three, seven, it's light, right? I mean, yeah, it's, yeah. Bulky, yeah. right. Are those so, people recycling after leaving single stream? I think they are. Yes. Yeah. No, no, no. I think I think they're recycling really well. The same. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to tell because we've broken it into all these different mm -hmm. groups now. Mm -hmm. But. Um, but trash tonnage hasn't changed dramatically. It's really more the demo tonnage, right? Right. So, so, so just that the tonnage is about level, the I guess. Yeah. It's what they yeah. were before. Because, yeah. I mean, when yeah. I think like the fill event, I'll tell you that. Yeah. No. Yeah. Especially with no. plastic. Yeah. I mean, that's just yeah. the yeah. So, so that's yeah. how much faster you put yeah. the, them, you know, the single streams. Right? Yeah. Right. I mean, the single streams, we were pounding that down with the backhoe every day we were open. Mm -hmm. You know, we were packing that just as full as we could get it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. All right, I, yeah. I wish I had numbers from past years, mm. but I don't know how, I don't know whether our MSW was getting hauled completely full or... It was not, because that's why we, when we bonded the transfer station renovations, we got a second compactor for mm -hmm. exactly that reason, because they weren't full okay. hauls, so you weren't maximizing the no. haul fee. Because they had to make sure they had an, uh, a, a really one open uh, empty one Saturday. on yeah. Saturday when most yeah. people come, yeah. and yeah. so they didn't want to risk not right. having that ability right. and have to shut down the station. Yeah. Right. So and it was always, reason, now you have two, so yeah. there's definitely a... Yep. There's a savings there, whether yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I do. I've got three of those cans. Two of them are hooked to the machines. There's always an empty spare sitting there. Mm -hmm. So if something really happened, if I had a breakdown on one machine, the other one was full, I can come in, we swap can it, we swap can the cans that. around, and make sure there's an empty one there. So <coughs> that that so will compact it as well. Yes. Oh. Okay. Yeah. There's always a, there's always one can there that's empty for the compactors. It's kind of a Insurance policy. Yep. So okay. I'm big on making sure this backs. Yeah. So if it's sitting there, it's not costing us anything to have it sit there. Mm -hmm. So, yep. Okay. Uh, let's see. Maintenance on the equipment on the next page. Uh, I did bring that up a little bit because we did add the plastic to the baler that we do plastic and aluminum mm -hmm. with. So I just upped that by the cost of what it costs to have it serviced a year. So, which is around. A little four hundred dollars. So and that's been working pretty well. Uh, let's see. This is where we'd like to talk about maybe changing how we do the demo. We visited Lee, New Hampshire, a couple of months ago, and they do it. We charge by the item or by the pickup truck load, which is someone's interpretation of what you're throwing away. You can come in with a truckload of feathers or a truckload of bricks. I shouldn't say bricks because we don't put bricks in here. I have the home for bricks. Um, uh, mattresses, for instance. You know, something that you can have a truckload of wood or a truckload of mattresses. Um, mattresses are going to take up more space than the wood is because we can crush the wood. The mattresses you can't crush. Mm -hmm. So the thought is to maybe and do like they did. They actually do it by pound. Mm -hmm. They charge by the weight. Everything we throw away is done by weight. Everything, everything we truck out is done by weight, by, by the time. So why not charge what comes in by, by the pound? Anywhere between seven and 10 cents a pound. This is a number. We put some numbers together back along just to see what it was gonna look like. Uh, could be upwards of 10 cents a pound. Uh, so someone comes in with what would, you know, uh, front steps to a house for instance. I don't know exactly what it would weigh, but rather than paying uh, $35 for a small pickup truckload, 
they may pay a little more based on the weight of the wood because we're putting that in the in the in the dumpster in the bin to get rid of that. Um, and with some other options, yeah. some other, yeah. Yeah, when I went to the conference this past May, um, I talked to a company up there that sells scales, Fairbanks scale, uh, Fairbanks scales. And they are to buy a four foot by four foot. I don't want to, the, the ideal thing would be something you drive on, but that's not affordable. So a four foot by four foot scale, electronic scale. Uh, is roughly sixteen, just about sixteen hundred dollars. It's just slightly lower than that, it's like fifteen eighty-five. So sixteen hundred dollars for a set of scales. Electronic scales, brand new, gives you the readout, so you know exactly what it is. Through New Hampshire, the beautiful, through NRRA, we can get upwards of a fifty percent grant for those. Are they indoors or outdoors? Indoors. They should, they should have a cover over them. They're electronic, so the, the scales themselves aren't going to be affected by weather, but the control you have would. Okay. So I've got to have a little spot to put in. So Could, I haven't figured that one. And you're emptying and you're reloading, and you're emptying and reloading. Right. That's, that that is going to make more, people a little angry. It's a little more, it's a little more manpower. Yeah. But what I would have would be something on the scales that someone could come in, they put a dozen items in it. I know what the weight of it is that they're putting in. Yeah. Okay, it's not full. You hit zero, it zeroes out the scales based on what's sitting in it. The next person comes in, throws into it, now I know what they've thrown out. They'll see so you this. keep adding to it. But you keep adding to it, it until time. you get it to time to take it over and dump it in the bin. What's the capacity? Uh, it's whatever I want to make. Oh, the capacity of the scales, I think, are 5,000 pounds. So. so Okay. This, I still get some more logistics to work out. We'd be dumping it into one dump, another dumpster, and we'd be dumping it into the. Yeah, I yeah. understand what you're saying. Yeah, but I it guess it would I'm slow the process up a little. It is going to slow the process up. But, but I think it would be more. It would be more cost effective for everybody. Well, and it's just fairer. Right? Exactly. Well, well, I, oh, I get that part. Yeah. I just want to. I, I don't understand yeah. the logistic part the logistic. of this. So tell it's me the logistic part. Are you going to put it in the barn where the cardboard is? Are you going to put it in undercover or somewhere else? I think there? I'd have to have it out somewhere in the area of the cardboard building, but the scales themselves would be outside. Uh, whether I do a shed roof over it, something like that, that's cheap and easy to do. Uh, but have the control unit inside. The control unit needs to be, or the readout needs to be, where the customer can see it. Yeah. So they can see what it is. Because uh, they want to know what. Yeah. But see, if you're putting it over there, you have to unload it. They're going to have to swing Then you have to load it back up and go over there. No, 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 no. No, where is it going to be disposed of? No. We will dispose of it. We'll dispose of it. So you're going to have a big pile of gunk? No. It's in the, it, it'll, be, it'll be in like a little mini dumpster on top of the scales. So you put it a mini walks. dumpster on the scales yeah. and then you zero out the tear weight so yeah. it thinks and there's we'll no way. an eight foot couch. You're going to put that in there? You could. You could set it on top of it. In okay. which case, and then you're going to go. In which case, they just come over with the, with the skid steer, pick it up with the forks, and take it over and dump it. Okay. Yeah. All right. It's a little more work. Okay. It's a little okay. more. Okay. So the, the customer is only going to be putting it from once. Once. Yeah. Once okay. the customer puts it in there, they're done with it. Okay. We but take it from there. Are you looking for additional manpower as well? Well, in my budget, I do. In my budget <laughs> from last year, uh -huh. there was an additional person that I have not hired yet. Okay. And I probably won't hire. For the rest of this year, okay. until I see where our MSW is going, our, our, our uh, demo plays out. I mean, there's already someone working the demo. The, yeah. Well, yeah. the person in the barn. He's doing yeah, yeah, the cardboard. He's doing the cardboard. He pays them and then they go and dump it. Right. Right? right. I mean, so, so he has so to the person anyway. Yeah, we don't have somebody, because we don't have the manpower to be doing that right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Doing what right now? Someone at, at the demo all the time. Right, it? right. So. so He's looking at what's in the whatever in his pickup truck or something. He's charging him accordingly what right. he sees in the pickup truck, and then he's going to go and dump it. He collects the money the pickup and then truck goes and it. gets rid okay. of it. So, yeah, there there is there is a couple of logistics to work out there, but I think okay. we can do it. So is this so. in your budget here, the the scale? I believe it is. Okay. Yes. It, it seems Looks like it's in equipment and maintenance. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Another benefit yeah. with the scale. Add we scales. We can weigh everything that goes out. And you'll know it's being done. I'm sorry, I missed that one. 
The other benefit with the scale is you can weigh your bales and know exactly what you're shipping mm -hmm. all the time. Right. I can't go with our Oh, you're, you're bailing our, stuff? Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, you don't know? No. We don't have no way of You have no way of knowing. You can't weigh them. Okay. Um, I'm going to take a bale of plastic um, back up a smidge. We've been bailing plastic now since January. Mm -hmm. I've got 22 bales sitting there as of this afternoon. Mm -hmm. There's another one in the machine right now, as I call Mary and Keith. Mm -hmm. To make these plastic, plastic bales, you need to let them sit a minimum of four to five plus hours in the machine, compacted. Um, 20, yeah, 24 hours is what we've been doing. Mm -hmm. uh, we did do one this afternoon at five hours. Hopefully it holds together. Is it less time if it's warmer out? Doesn't seem to make a difference. No. no. The air no. is just... Yeah, yeah mem uh, plastic has a memory. You know, you squish a bottle, you let go of it, it comes back. Now, if you take this much of it and you squish it to here, it's going to come back. As it tries to go back, what it does, it actually breaks the bands mm -hmm. that we put around it. Oh. And it makes quite a mess. Mm -hmm. This whole plastic bailing has been quite a learning curve, mm -hmm. but I think we've conquered it. Okay. And with the help, go back to Lee, with the help of, of Lee, New Hampshire, um, and NRA, they've really helped us through it. Um, I met a gentleman at, at, the, at the NRA meeting that was the, uh, the superintendent that ran the Lee Recycling Facility of Transfer Station, and we went over and talked to him. He since has been has moved on. Um, his predecessor, or his, uh, the new guy coming in, ended up being someone I know from just life. Mm -hmm. So uh, the tables have now switched. I'm helping him. Mm -hmm. So, and I think in some of this, we're going to be able to share some loads as well. So if I don't have a full load of plastic, and he doesn't have a full load of plastic, we can ship it all together. Mm -hmm. But I also need to know, what am I shipping weight-wise? Mm -hmm. I hate to rely on someone else. Mm -hmm. I don't even like relying on the freight companies. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm sure what they do is honest. They run two certified scales mm -hmm. and all that, but mm -hmm. it's just better to know. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the aluminum that we're doing, that's probably one of the better things in this whole recycling thing. We get paid anywhere between 20 and 35 cents. We have been paid between 20 and 35 cents per pound mm -hmm. to, to mm -hmm. sell aluminum. We take it over to Berwick Iron, uh, so it's like a three mile ride. We, if we saved up a trailer load, we could get more money, but it's not worth We don't have the facilities to, to store it. Mm -hmm. And once we make it, I can take three bales over there, get a check for. Two fifty to four hundred dollars. Bring it back. And there you go. So easy and done. And that's what those have been averaging. Mm -hmm. So the income from that's been pretty well. Uh, the tin cans. We tried bailing tin. It was difficult to bail because you can't compact it mm -hmm. as well and as easy. Mm -hmm. They're just as happy to take it over Berwick Loose. It mm -hmm. pays the same amount. Mm -hmm. So the last time we did did that, I took it over in the big dump truck. Put it in, covered it, and off we went. Mm -hmm. uh, it didn't pay a lot, but I think it I made cost us right? I think I made right. yeah, I think I made three trips over there and got just under forty dollars. Yeah. But it's no big deal. It's three miles away. Right. It was right. it was a nine mile ride, and and like you say, it didn't cost us anywhere near. You got 60 forty versus 50. paying sixty nine. Yes, whatever, so. exactly. Yeah. And any time I can either break even yeah. or get a little extra. Yeah. That's a good thing. It's a win. And that's what we do. Mm -hmm. They also take our batteries, our, our lead acid batteries, mm -hmm. the little batteries. We do have to pay to get rid of those mm -hmm. through North Coast, but that's all into the budget with light bulbs and all that. Mm -hmm. so. so back on the scale side of things, um, I, I'm just I'm looking around the yard there trying to find the best place for it to keep the flow mm -hmm. the way it should be. Uh, whether it means putting a little four by four shack over towards the they must, the uh, demo or however it works, that's all minor dollar stuff. That's mm -hmm. you know, uh, but I do think that may be the way to go. Is there a time frame on the grant? No, it's they do they do grants every three months. Okay. So uh, the next one we did one in August, I think October, maybe the next one. So, uh, 
I've actually got the paperwork all filled out, ready to go. I just haven't approached. But how long does it, the if you got the, if you got it, you mean October of this year? Yeah. I yeah, mean, which would it be good to, into 2020, though? What's that? We have money in the we guys were just watching the dollars to see. Wait to see what we, we get the final money. Yeah, see where things fall out, you know, before we pull the trigger on it and say, yeah, we want to do it. Just make sure we've got everything in place for it before yeah. okay. we jump into it. Okay. Cool. The nice thing is when I when I talked to the gentleman at the show and he sent me the quote, he told me what it was going to cost and he sent me the quote. I'm like, I was thinking there were four or five thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Uh, in my past life, that's what scales and whatnot cost. Mm -hmm. But I was backing forklifts on them. I needed mm -hmm. scales that would do 20, 30,000 pounds. Mm -hmm. This is a 5,000 pound. Mm -hmm. So I don't ever see us overfilling it. You know, and I'm not going to design where it sets so you can back a piece of equipment on it. Mm -hmm. It's going to be guarded against that. Because mm -hmm. the temptation would be there for those that don't know. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it would destroy it. But it may throw it out of calibration, and mm -hmm. let's just avoid that. We don't need to be there. So. so that's something you may see later on this year, uh, if we have the money in the equipment fund, that, that may work, and you folks want to approve it. So uh, I have been told that there is up to 50%. Normally, they do 20% on, on their grants that they do. Uh, scales, containers, I think was the other thing that they will go up to 50 on. So, And they do work with this particular company on that grant. So it's all kind of different. And of course we'd have to decide, uh, though I'd actually like to have the scales regardless of whether we change how we do demo because it will tell us what we're shipping out for recycling. Um, brush chipping. Brush chipping didn't go quite as well as we'd hoped it would because last year we changed to uh, rather than having a haul off to chipping it ourselves. Um, it just wasn't working out logistically and manpower wise. So we did have a lot hauled off this year uh, to get us back down to a manageable level. Uh, we did use the budget to. I don't think there's anything left in that. Might be pennies left in that budget, but that line. But that, you know, we need to get rid of that. It says here at 2500 right now, year to date. Okay. Yeah, you have to oh. have a room. You could do so there is some. Okay. $1,000. Yeah. Yeah. So we actually built a burn pit. Okay. And we, we had a bunch of the not Jersey berries, the big cement blocks. They were out back. There was like the leftover blocks that were not much good for anything else, not structural or anything. So we built a big area uh, that we can pile brush in and burn it. We are waiting for a permit from the state. We have approval from the state and approval from the fire, the town's fire chief. Uh, we did do one session of burning with his approval. Uh, went well. We feed it with a backhoe. It's done off times when the when the transfer station's not open. And on a rainy, gloomy day when we can't be out doing anything else. Which I'm kind of hoping for one of those pretty soon because we got a pile of brush to burn, but it worked well. Uh, the only concern was that, that um, the reason why it stopped was because of um, CNJ. And we so talked we, to them. We have very good neighbors yeah. with them, so we, we need to We talked to, to them prior to doing any okay. of this first. Yeah. And we they, watched, you know, Mike and everything said a lot of vehicles were outside at the time, now most of the stuff's under cover. Okay. And yeah. he says, and if, if you're paying attention, I mean, we didn't even have a little ash. Well, yeah. Know. No. Okay. No. We did it on a day that was um, quite drizzly. Everything would have been wet, so there was no problem that way. As you know, he was a firefighter. I'm still a firefighter. Mike, that works for us, is a firefighter. Uh, we're very much in tune to <laughs> brush fires or fires of any type. Mm -hmm. um, I actually fought the idea of doing a burn pit because mm -hmm. I just didn't like the idea, but. We came to an understanding. We did it. That's working. Good. So I hit a little crow on that one. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, no, it did work out well. The fire department had some old hose that they brought us down. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so when we do it, we stretch a, a hose out from the hydrant right to the pile, and if something happens, we're right there. So it's not left unattended. That's how we're done. So, so that's worked out well doing that. Uh, but I am leaving. I think I did leave that number, and uh, I took that down to a thousand dollars, and that's mainly just to help with the, the manpower doing it. Mm -hmm. So. You know, if we're, if we're out there and we want to break out that number, we could. Mm -hmm. So, so that did, that did decrease. Uh, where I left off of glass. 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 Glass has actually worked out really well. Can we go back up to recent hazardous workplace disposal? Sure. Did that ever get advertised that that was last weekend? It did get advertised. Well, I don't I know if it went it. out over the email, but I it was sent it. to. It was sent. You know, we, we sent it for posting via email. It was posted in paper here and at the post office. Um, not the, the and I put it on the town calendar, okay. but I don't know whether or not she ever sent it out. I did send it to her. So do we have to pay whether or not, if we get no wrongs with people went there, do we still have to pay? That I don't know. No, I've, never, it, I've never been involved in it. We I pay, didn't even know it was um, last weekend. Yeah, I think it was last weekend. <laughs> Yeah, we somebody missed the whole run out. Yeah. So, so, so there was a big, you know, we, we had Dover and and we had a miscommunication and they followed up at like two weeks before. Um, we we did not do as well with communication as we should have done for sure. Okay. Um, but we will pay only proportionately with regard to how many Rollinsburg residents. Um, participated in the whole event, okay. so it's it's. All was telling them at the transfer station that they were doing it that day for, on Saturday. So mm -hmm. you know, if people had stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, they had the time to go do it. That's the whole thing. But I'll it's only it. half a day, once a year. You know, it's not. Yeah, but I didn't know about it at all until Harry told me. Oh, that was last weekend. Really? <laughs> I, I mean, I didn't see anything through email or or anything. So I, I didn't see it via email either, mm -hmm. and yeah, I, I don't know. Okay. Hopefully we'll be better by that next year. Thank you, because I yeah. did not know about it. Yeah. So I probably should have. Yes, you should yeah. apologize. Yeah. It's okay. Okay. It was in the news so. theater. Yes, it was. Oh, you mean the one in June? Or whenever mm -hmm. it was? So. Yeah, well, that was okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because if we had known, uh, you know, we could have posted it. Yeah. Know, a couple of well, weeks down there. Yeah. 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 So last year we decided in the MS, when we were still doing single strain, we pulled the glass out of the single strain. And that, of course, lightens a lot of glass. is one of your heavier commodities to get rid of. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of glass generated in this town, whether it's, you know, it's all kinds of different bottles and, and jazz. So rather than paying the 68.50 a ton to get rid of glass in MSW or in uh, single strain, we were paying more than that for single strain. Uh, we can get rid of glass at $35 a ton by hauling it as a separate commodity. Uh, initially, it was going to Wakefield, New Hampshire. This is all set out through NIRA, uh, where it's stockpiled, and then they bring a, a grinder in, and they grind it up into little 3 8 inch pieces. Um, you, you can virtually pick it up, put it in your hands like this, and not cut your hands. Uh, it's used in road beds, uh, under hot top. It needs to be covered. It's being used anywhere near a road because of its reflectivity. Um, it, you know, if it's on the edge of the road and you're driving along, you get this stuff flicker in there. It's not good. So, um, Wakefield became overrun. They set up a new agreement with waste management in Rochester. Um, I did haul one load to Wakefield with our truck, and I found it more cost effective to put it in a dumpster, a 30 yard dumpster. We take the back out, we crush it down. We haul uh, 12 to 13 ton at a time, and I have Triano pick it up for 225 bucks, And it's worked into the budget. It's done probably four times a year. So it's not a lot of money, and it's the best way to do it. Uh, taking it up in our truck, we have to take it out of the dumpster, we have to put it in the dump truck, cover it, and haul it. This way, they come in one haul. Uh, you're probably hauling one or two ton. Yeah, yeah, I'm hauling. A fraction of what they would haul. Mm -hmm. So this thir thirteen fifty 
is for the tonnage only, not the pollen, not Trayano's cost. We get that down at line. 919. Oh, the glass recycling. That is, that is most likely, yeah, I wish I knew. Uh, actually, it's your narrative says it. I was going to say, sorry. <laughs> yeah. So you probably do need to up your, um, you're hauling up recycling because your proposal is only going to pay for glass and not for. Right. So I think I think the glass itself I just figured is part of the MSW. But, yeah. So that's the one thing that I found. I mean, I've, I've been over this budget so many times; it's starting to blur. But where we had before three components to it, we now have many components. So once I get the budget done, it's like, oh god. No, wait a minute, what about, about X, Y, Z? Here it goes. So, I've only been in this position for just a year. Yeah, mm -hmm. I took over everything last June as the manager of uh, transfer station. So, I'm going to for here, I love the transfer station. <laughs> good, that's good to hear. <laughs> that's what we try to achieve. So that is only the tonnage then, right? You don't have the 250 in there. I probably don't, no. Okay, so you need to modify that. Okay. So shouldn't you leave the 250 in the glass recycling and not have an MSW, right? Yeah, I can. I'll, okay. I'll make sure that all ends up in the one in the one line in the okay. glass recycling. Yep. So. Okay. Okay. So anyway, yes. Yeah, so like I said, that's that's one of our better one of our better things where it it does save quite a bit of money. So. Um, the demo is still it's still a moving target that we're working feverishly to try to hit. Uh, in my narrative in the paperwork, the, the the letter form I gave you, it says it's based on 120.5 tons. It's actually based on 180 tons. What I did is I changed the budget side of it, but didn't change it on the on the handwriting side, and about 5.5 ton of a buffer which isn't a huge buffer, but uh, it's about two extra hauls, because that, that, that average is about in between two and three ton per, per container. Uh, mixed paper. I'm going to double check that number. That's the other thing that I got from NRA late this afternoon, after we had the haul last week when they took out mixed paper. That's the first time this year we've had that hauled. Uh, that's the second time we've had it hauled. Because we had cardboard and paper hauled once. Uh, it's, I don't have the exact number with me tonight for what that cost us. It wasn't huge money. It was, I want to say it was under four ton of paper. I think the cost was $30 a ton, if I have my memory right. But, so I'm just going to double double check that one. Okay. So, and all these, unfortunately, all the rates that we pay to have this done changes on a monthly basis. Mm -hmm. Some of it changes by pennies, but as you see, the difference between four cents and five cents a ton is twenty dollars. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't take long to add up because we we have a lot of weight of everything we get rid of. So. Uh, The only other thing is storage space. Uh, well, based on the above button, to step back up a, a sentence here. Yeah. So we're looking, we're a little more than 27, 27 20, probably closer to 29, no, 27, 27,300 dollars up, um, based on what I had given you initially, and I'm only changing that because of. Uh, I had a wrong number, the 20,000 is more is 27,050, but we also have the additional taxes, on, mm -hmm. so that's up a couple hundred dollars, so. So it is up significant from the year before, which has been a little bit of a, it's been a big heartache for me trying to figure out where, why, and what. And I don't have a clear answer except for the fact that we, we know we have more weight than we're, than we're disposing of. And it's time to, tra it's time to, to translate over. So, uh, the other thing, talking about 
storing this stuff and all this to, to get a, a load. We need 22 pallets of mixed paper, makes a truckload. About 44 bales of cardboard, uh, yeah, 44 bales of cardboard makes a load. You don't want to ship the stuff half loaded. You want to get a trailer, truck a trailer in and ship a whole load. <coughs> the uh, mixed plastic, we're not positive on yet because they need to know what a bale weighs mm -hmm. so we don't overload the truck. Uh, so what it means is we've got to have some places to keep the stuff. Trailers and ground containers are not all that easy to use for doing what we're doing. It's great for stuff you're putting in by hand, not so much if you're trying to load it with the skid steer with a set of forks. You end up just making more of a mess and breaking bales. And that was one of the things that I talked to Lee about and they were having issues with that. They also have a building that's big enough to work on the color, which would be ideal, but we're not doing that. We can't afford that. Mm -hmm. it's, that's not even in the, in the game plan. They're building two lines of pads drive into the building, and that's how they dump everything off. Under the cover. Under cover. It's beautiful, but mm -hmm. there's two level. If you drive it up top, everything's thrown down below. The guys are running around down below taking care of it. But in a perfect world, yeah, but we don't live in a perfect world. <laughs> so we make do with what we can do. Mm -hmm. So. But down the road somewhere, we do need another building. We've got the Quonset hut that's there, and that normally was just cardboard and spare storage for whatever needed to go in there. Now we've put cardboard in there, we've got plastic in there, and we've got the mixed paper. And it's busting at the seams. So why did you take the Quonset huts off of your CIP projects? To revamp, revamp what I'm trying to do. It wasn't, it wasn't going to work the way that I originally thought. I wanted a Quonset Hutto back mm -hmm. to cover some things, mm -hmm. but looking at it, it's like, do we do little bits of things here and there, or do we just come up with a, a game plan to do it once, without this little series of buildings you got to run around in. So, I didn't know I actually took them off. I thought they were still sitting there, but is sitting there with zero dollars. With zero dollars. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I don't think but, I had any dollars on them before. But I, I think know. she said that it was it was a change that. Well, because we part. talked about building wooden covers for those tires and. Yep. Uh, appliances. Appliances. Yeah. 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 Um, which would be it's not even a CIP. Yeah, that we can. That we can do under ten thousand dollars to do those things. And the same, we do need to cover the uh, recyclables. Mm -hmm. Okay, but that's we just got a quote the other day for the rafters to do that. I think it was what twenty two hundred dollars for rafters, and we got to get the quote for the metal. Yeah, so I think we're well under six thousand dollars to do that by the time we put the metal. The walls virtually are already there. Mm -hmm. It's the dividers. Mm -hmm. But now thinking about separating out the plastics, I may have to move the glass. To the as you're driving up, everything is on the left. Mm -hmm. The glass may have to move to the right, mm -hmm. which is really easy. It's a container, it just slides over there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And push come to shove, I can put a little roof over that easy, mm -hmm. a cheap and dirty thing for that. But it means that I may have to put another set of jersey barriers in and put another wall up to make another bin for the plastic. Mm -hmm. So that's just simply going to add what four trusses to do that. So but we haven't built anything yet, so it's really easy. Well, that's what you're talking about when you're separating what the what two, two that you yes. can get money for, and yeah. the rest are going to go away. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Plastic has to be undercover, and we're fortunate with the Quonset out there now. We, you know, that we have, we we're able to keep undercover. Um, UV rays destroy the plastic, as you know, you know the way outside plastic toys are, or even rakes you leave outside. You know, you, so you got to keep the sunlight off of them, we, and we're able to do that in the Quonset hut. So as we get closer to the front of it, which we're just about there now, we're just going to throw a tap over, let's say, uh, just to keep the light off of it. Mm -hmm. But like I said, that building was designed for one product. Mm -hmm. We've now got three in there. So, but my, the back of my head, it just, I, I'm thinking kind of where our demo bins are now, between there and the hot top, put up a building. Mm -hmm. Just put up a story building now. 
I don't have any numbers for it yet. So, you know, a, a metal building, a pole barn, pole barn actually would be the best thing. All it is is storage. So, project number 22 is to get the pricing on that. So I can move that. It's not moving forward this year. So I would love to, but I, it's not logistically feasible, I don't think, to get those numbers and try to plug something into that this year. Okay. And we'll just make do. So, which we try to do. Well, thank you very so much. unfortunately, my budget is a moving target. Yeah. And, uh, and the other bad part is it's a necessity. Right. I can't tell somebody, no, you can't throw that away. We're out of money. Mm -hmm. So I yeah. have to try to make it work somehow. And I try to bring as much income in as we can with what we have. Uh, July to date, I think this goes to the end of July. Uh, Carolina did me a, 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 a report. Looks like we brought in just a little over sixteen thousand dollars this year. Now that's for MSW, that's for uh, demo, that's for electronics that we people have paid to throw away. Uh, the aluminum, the tin, the scrap metal pile. Actually, we just got to check today for over four hundred. Was it for the scrap metal pile? So they couldn't pick that up. So, it all helps. Yes, it does. Yes. If we could go back into my budget, that would be the way that that is the way towns work. It goes into the <laughs> general fund and then you pull it back out in need next year. Yeah. So. All right. Yeah. Thank you. What's your thing? Um, Bob, we're about a half an hour delayed. So. Um, you're welcome to stay or come back. I don't know. How, how, how windy are you going to be? <laughs> Mine's gonna be quick then. Okay, so oh, I'll say okay. I just wanted to forewarn you. All right, thank you. Good work. All right. I have a narrative, mm -hmm. and uh, looking at put on another part-time, permanent part-time, like Mike, for the days when he's not around, so we can continue doing projects and having to help. We're doing a lot more projects than was ever done here in the department, so we're trying to, you know, we need the extra manpower to do that. Whether it be using call, you know, working this out somehow that put him on the transit station, highway department situation, you know, but we, we definitely need more hand, man, manpower when we're doing the major projects that we're doing. And we want to continue to do that. We get sidewalks and need repairs that we can do, and you know, uh, a lot of other uh, projects that have to be done. How many That's hours does Paul work now at the transfer station? Sixteen. He can't work. So that will be forty, which. No, he can't work forty. Well, that would be no, 40. right, right. No, that's what I mean. Oh, Somebody okay. Like, oh, he's re oh, he's, like oh, yeah, he's retired. Part. And can only make so much so money. Anybody, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, but this part-time person could also throw in at the transfer station for other, you know, help out over there, so we can switch the cost or whatever you want to do with that. Okay. That was, is a thought. I, I, you know, we, we want to continue doing projects. We want to try to get uh, more done as, as we as we can. So I, I brought it. You know, asking for one more part-time position. It's uh, it is an eighteen thousand dollar increase. However, we did cut back on a few other items. Uh, equipment fund, we dropped it down five thousand. I dropped the uh, vehicle maintenance down five thousand because the vehicles are newer. We shouldn't be having that much maintenance on them. It shows. That it's only a twenty-one thousand. It's a twenty-one thousand dollar increase, but it also doesn't show that where I dropped the five thousand from equipment uh, vehicle repair didn't show the negative. So it's probably a fifteen or sixteen thousand dollar increase in the whole budget. Yeah, this sheet says sixteen six five five. You see my printout here when I did it on the computer. Oh, it oh, shows, oh. You know, it must have picked it up. Which one are you talking about? The total overall change. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I don't have the act. I, I did the one originally. I don't know. Um, it, it didn't pick up on one $5,000 decrease. 
On your list, but it doesn't. Oh, on your right. List. Okay, so I have an increase of eighteen thousand one eighty four in the highway department. Hmm. I see sixteen six fifty five. But that probably isn't payroll taxes. Or so oh, yeah, that's right. It doesn't include the payroll taxes and yeah. Uh, so. Gotcha. I didn't, what do you have, Caroline? Eighteen. Um, eighteen one eighty four, and payroll taxes are ten thousand three eighty eight. Uh, so, okay. yeah, 10388 which is um, based on, on the um, highway part-time and full-time yep. lines as proposed. That's an increase of $1,427. $1,427? Yes, for payroll taxes. Okay. That includes the, the part-time employee. Right. That's, for an right that's, that's all the payroll lines. And, and I did not put in for the raise. I was even asked a few people. I moved the paint the line, uh, I took the paint out of the paint line and put it in the supply line so it will, we won't have to have a separate line for that. But we did have to add $1,000 so we can do the line striping, which was not, it was only 1500 in here for line striping, but that was just based on paint for this year. But we want to do the yellow line, so that's about $2,500 price tag, so we had to raise that line. The long lines. The long lines. What does that mean? Streets. The, the, the yellow lines? Down there well, I thought you told me you couldn't do those. We, we can't. Are. That's why I had to make that line. Oh, you're saying this is, this is going outside to that with somebody. That line will be It's in. outside. And people. the paint, okay. and not knowing how much paint it was going to take to do our strip, we, next year we probably won't have to buy paint. I got five gallons, five, five gallon fields of paint left, so we should be all set for next year as far as buying paint. Out of supplies. Okay. Street sweeping, we had had to add a thousand for a second street sweeping. Because of storm water. Because of the storm water. Uh, and I tried to keep road maintenance in at the 350, hoping to be able to finish Lago Road and do the top court on which run. Whether that's your plan or not, that's what I'm proposing for next year. So you would go from um, what's that road that you stopped Pinch Hill, Pinch Hill route to four. Route 4, Finish that whole that road. That, grind that section and do what we did this year. Just base it in. Top coat, the full woods run. Did that get any top coating? No, no, no it was only no. heritage and no. Moses Car. Right. Next okay. year we do that woods run. And whatever we have the money left for, we see if we can overlay a few streets in town after I talk to the point we see with, uh, when we meet with Pike on whatever. Is there any other what is um, any other priorities in town as well that are pretty? Uh, Jesse Doe is going to need to be rebuilt. Jesse Doe. Yeah, going into transfer station. It's going to, why? Because it's all breaking up. That's not. I mean, it's, it was on the schedule, I guess. But we have to look at that schedule. We have to sit down and go over the road schedule. Okay. Yeah. See what's next. But is again, that because of the heavy duty? Yeah, so we've got designed for, for heavy duty equipment. Us, C and J, the two businesses that are there. All, all, all trucks. All trucks. All heavy trucks. And Mike told us it was built the same way. Everything else was built in town. It wasn't designed. Well, it was short sighted, wasn't it? Okay. They used gravel. They had, they had sand there they used, and it wasn't the proper bases and all that stuff when they built the project. So that's what we were told. Yeah. And it's showing it. Okay. Uh, All right, but there's no other roads in town that are really disaster. I mean, I no. I think Jesse Doe's going to be the next worst one. We got to start thinking about overlaying some of the others, and we can get away with just overlaying. Yeah. Okay. I mean, some of them down here are going to probably have to be ground down because of everything's left in and we just be damping them like Third Street stuff because of where the sides are collapsing and stuff. Again, it's, it's all dust. You know. The way things go back in the day. Mm -hmm. how, how long ago were those roads? Right, and what you know, they have been done for a long time. time so I, don't know. So I think they've, they've lasted. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I've got it. But they don't have the traffic flow. Well, mm -hmm. South does probably, but the others don't have so much traffic. They've done when they did it. That was the more recent that. one. Yeah. Yeah. Down yeah. Down. yeah. That area's been done. So. Yeah. It's not always the traffic, it's the, just the winter cycle of the use of thaw. Right. You know, right. Okay. But we do have to look at the, this road schedule. Um, so 
basically, I, le I left everything pretty much the same with a few this uh, I did put in six thousand dollars for equipment rental so we could rent the skids, the excavator again to finish the rooms and show the work next year on Sligo or any, anywhere else we can get the time to do it with. And that can be taken out, you know, that's only going to probably be a one year thing. So where did money come out this year? Is it where was it? We took it to road money. We could probably do the same thing next year. Oh, I just wanted oh, to have okay. that line here in case. I know we did it twice, so we didn't know where it came out of the road project. Yes. Yeah, we, that's what we decided. We probably could have come out of the road project too. Then right. I mean, Sligo Road section that we're going to do next year is shorter. It depends <coughs> every year what's what you're doing for projects yeah. and what the project cost is and what you're budgeting for the project cost yeah. whether there's enough in there yeah. so you know maybe even you know if you think it can come out of road maintenance you know you can even create the line and put a dollar in it just so that just it, so we have a, a place to yeah a place to to track it. yeah all right we'll we'll talk about that another right. time yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. okay but uh the uh, i tried to keep it as down, uh, you know, as long as we could, well, okay. but I don't see anything out of the ordinary that, you know, that we need to do. Okay. So. okay. Any questions, guys? No. Mm -hmm. Short and sweet. Alrighty. Good. This All right. was Mr. Dolan rule. <laughs>
But at this point, <clears throat> I put 3% in across the board. Doesn't mean you're going to get 3%, but there's 3% in there uh, with that line item. What, what do you mean? Doesn't mean that they wouldn't get it. Well, if, if we don't add something, uh, like another line item for merit or whatever the case might be, mm -hmm. um, the, the pay would be based upon your performance. You know, See, so, that's where so, I think we got in trouble. Well, well the person who, who does very well uh, should um, not, or should get a rate higher than the person who just gets by. How do we get in trouble? Well, our, our salaries for some positions oh, oh, didn't oh, get annual up, uh, updates like to keep up. And so then our position, not our people, our positions were starting to go backwards. But we shouldn't be rewarding poor performance. No, I know well, that. That's, really that's why I'm thinking that, we have two separate line names. One cost of living, so everyone, everybody will get a minimum of whatever the figure yeah. is. And then you have another line for merit-based. Yeah. It really should just be for the police, it should be for all the, all the town employees yeah. as well. Um, you know, whether you have one line item in the town portion that, or, or it has to go for each individual department, I'm not sure. I mean, that's mm -hmm. something that you folks work out, Caroline, but uh, you're right. So we don't get to the point where we did this year, um, not with the police, but other employees in the town here that, uh, you know, really need to consider what are we going to do in the future when it comes to the pay raise for everybody. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, you just don't want to go I'm going backwards because you're yep. not well, we, just, we just sort of fix this, right? We fix uh, it, so we I don't want to go backwards. Right. We, we don't want to go backwards. Right. And that's why I wanted to ask you about your part time because you're not making a change on that. Uh, I'm right? not. And again, you know, we have uh, the fifth full timer, uh, and the long term plan is to use the part timers less. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in the last couple of years, we've been so short handed, we've been defending the part timers to actually work in place of a full timer. Uh, in the future, the part-timers will be mainly be covered when someone's sick, work a second car when needed. Uh, you know, if I have someone that's going to the academy for a couple of weeks or a couple of days for advanced schooling, they cover. Uh, but they would not be covering the road uh, for routine patrols like they are now. So that's why I have not increased that. So would you still give them a, a percentage increase? Right, because you're asking increase. for the same amount of money. Right. They get an so increase, but we're increase. just using, we're just getting okay. a few hours less from oh, them. Okay, day. then I'm happy with that. So. Okay. So it comes to, to my line item. Um, as you remember, the letter that I, I, I sent to you folks uh, uh, months ago, and on page one, two, three, Somewhere there, there should be sheet showing. I don't know, I don't think I wrote it up. Uh, the it might be in your the original narrative sheet. because they have your original. Okay. okay. Um, Do we? It's a spreadsheet. Well, it's the back of it. It's the back. Oh. It's the very back of it. I am the longest serving police chief in Stratford County. The next police chief who's Durham uh, was hired four years after I. And the majority of the police chiefs after that we have uh, 10 years or less in the job. And I am the second lowest paid police chief in the county. So having said that, and uh, you know, back, just to give a little history, back in 2008, um, again, we're in a position where we were shorthanded and we needed to have another full-time police officer, but the only way that was going to happen was um, for me to, to go part-time so you didn't have to pay my benefits. That would allow us to hire someone at a much lower rate and pay for that payment to get the full-time officer here. So since 2008, you haven't had to pay me vacation, you haven't paid me sick time, you haven't had to pay me holiday, time, holiday pay, or any additional compensation for any hours that I worked above and beyond what I should have been doing. Um, and this year, uh, you, you stopped paying the Social Security. Three years ago, we did a cost, we did a line item adjustment for the lieutenant's position, and this year we did a line item adjustment for all of the remaining full-time police officers. So in the last couple of years, everyone in the police department with their adjustments got at least between six and seven thousand dollars increase for their pay. Um, and we're fortunate to be able to do it this year, we didn't have to increase the, the line item at all, so there was no increase in the budget. Everyone got a decent pay raise without increasing the budget whatsoever. So I think it's time to, to look at the chief and say, you know, chief, it's your, it's your turn. Um, so what I did is I, I took the amount of uh, the 6.2%, which was what the town was paying for Social Security for me, 
So that's roughly $3,312 per year. And added that to my salary when I met him. So there's no change there. I mean, we're going to pay it one time, not you're not paying it. I'm, I'm just asking that you just now give me, give me the money. And a $5,000 uh, adjustment uh, for the line item itself for the chief's position. I will email you that uh, one I prepared with all the cheese salad. I don't know what that happened to that. Yeah, I, I mean, I remember that from... Yeah. The, only, the only chief that makes less than me is the chief at Milton. They actually don't have a chief right now. They have a new chief. And they've gone through several chiefs in the last in the last few years. Um, you know, my department is larger than Milton. It's larger than Madbury. It's larger than Stratford. It's larger than New Durham. And Milton. And those departments don't offer 24-7 coverage. They have folks go home at nighttime and take call, or the state police cover. Madbury is an entirely part-time police department, and uh, the state police cover their serious stuff. Um, so I think when you well, encapsulated all of it, that uh, I think I'm deserving of something. You know, whether or not you agree with what I put in there, but I, I think it's time to look at this position. And in a couple of years, or whenever I do decide to really retire, mm -hmm. Um, it just makes it that much easier uh, when you hire the next person because you, you don't have to increase the budget that much more to get someone who's qualified in here to replace them. Yeah. So, what is the the going rate for a? If we had to go out and replace you with a full-time chief, or I think you're looking at you think you're looking at least forty dollars an hour anyway. If you want to get someone who's, who's decent and experienced. Yeah, so you're talking 83,200. 83, mm. so. That's a full timer. That's a, that's a full timer, yes. Yeah. Plus. But then, then you're talking about benefits. Then you're talking about benefits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. But everything else is the status quo. I anticipate that uh, uh, just like this year, most, most of it will be spent on all of the line items. Except well, there'll be a couple of hazards cleaning. I don't think we've been taking anything out of that as a gift. But it's nice to have it there, just in the event that something happens. I did notice that in this coffee here that it was removed, though, and that just may have been made a mistake. Oh, on the spreadsheet? Yeah, in the spreadsheet. Yeah. Right. But I'm, I'm suggesting that we keep it in there, so um, if something does happen. I'm and, sorry, you know, there, there may be a couple of removed? Fun. The hazardous cleaning. Um, yeah, you get to, you remove the hazards and you, you actually remove the dare as well. And oh, we are okay. we are planning on hopefully doing dare in twenty twenty. That, that was that was an oversight, so thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure yeah, was, I'm sure. Yeah, we see it here. I just noticed it for half an hour ago. Yeah. Okay. So I didn't get a chance to talk to you. Alright, thank you. So Caroline earlier. Um uh, Dare is um do you have a qualified officer to do that? Well no, we'll we'll bring someone in parking the sheriff's department. Okay. Um like we did the, the last couple of times. Yeah. yeah so. okay. And uh, generally, uh, uh, with the dare supplies, we buy half of it in one year, the other half the following year. Mm -hmm. So prior to December, we'll purchase the books and the pens and the pencils and all mm -hmm. the stuff that they get. Yeah. And next year, the certificates and the, the bears and whatever that they gave up for the graduation mm -hmm. and the cost of the graduation itself. So. Okay. So. Okay. so the dispatch won't go up. Um, there, there is a little bit of room in there. Okay. Um, because in 2019 we actually increased it, oh, and they didn't charge us. They, they, again, I don't understand their billing because they gave us a discount of five percent, and then they charge us an additional five percent. So we actually paid actually in the long run, we actually paid a couple of dollars less this year than we did the prior year. Yeah. But in the chiefs meeting that we just had, uh, we we actually recommended to the the commissioners because the, the sheriff's department. Radio fund is in dire need of operating the entire mm -hmm. county as well. So we said, you know, don't give us a discount if you're going to be asking for more money. Mm -hmm. Keep it, mm -hmm. but just you know, apply increase, it increase the five percent and apply it to yeah. that. So, so I think they finally get the message that uh, uh, hopefully they won't give us a five percent decrease, but also increase it by five percent mm -hmm. because they're not only really defeating their own purpose. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Is it based on usage or just like? Is it's based on the population of the, of the community, just our slave. So large communities pay obviously significantly more than they do. So any questions on the police portion? 
Um, can I talk about Social Security? Is that um, have you been contributing to Social Security? I have been up in, from 2008 up until this month. I have been yes. So I contacted the. We, we might be in. The, it's up to it's up to him. Oh oh okay. Well, yeah, never mind. I don't care. Okay, go ahead. I contacted the um, state Social Security Administration. I know you talked to them a little bit also, maybe regarding Section 218. I don't know exactly. And they said it was actually illegal for a rehired annuitant, part-time rehired annuitant, or full-time, to contribute Social Security because you don't get any return on it. It doesn't go towards your Social Security wage base. So there might be, I don't know, but some sort of, they, she sent me just because we were inquiring, I was inquiring, um, forms that we can do to correct it. I think they can do the past three years. But it doesn't, uh, you don't get any years of service towards your Social Security, so it's kind of like, throwing away money. Well, see, I've been there several times, and depending on what office you go to, you get different answers. Yeah. And I did bring up the part about the, uh, you know, the, the rehire, mm -hmm. and, you know, one person says, yeah, you know, you're not supposed to be contributing. And, you know, the postal office says, yeah. <clears throat> uh, it says you don't have, you, 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 you don't, you're not required to participate, but you can if you want to. Okay. So, um, so, so that portion, I, I'm, I guess I'm not too concerned about at this point, because uh, obviously I, I don't want to penalize the town, and you know, at some point, have Social Security come out to town and say, hey, you've been paying all this time, and you know, it doesn't mean anything now, so. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there, is, there was something, you're, there was a, an option, there, and somewhere built in, where they say the police, you can pay as a town, and Rollinsford itself actually has an agreement with the state, Rollinsford, the specific town, saying that <clears throat> any positions that are uh, employed by the police office, by the police department, that are not uh, actual police officers, they can contribute if they want. Yeah, that's what I mean. You mean like the dog catcher or something like that? Or administrative staff. Or, or you staff, that's yeah. true. I forgot about that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And we yeah. made, we opted into that in like the 90s or something. Yeah. So, See, they did not mention any agreement uh, when I went down I mean, I spoke with them, so. You have a copy of that? Yep, they sent me a bunch of documents. You wanted to send that to you? Yeah, if you would. Absolutely. Yeah. You have my card in my email, so. Yeah, okay. Good. Okay, so. Um... And actually, if you go to page three, it actually gives an explanation of all the uh, changes. From my position, the full-time position, co-witness page. So the in dash camera is is that usually part of outfitting a new cruiser? Yeah, that's generally when we purchase the camera when you get the new cruiser. Okay. Uh, all the cameras that we have, with the exception of the one that's in the seven two, were all purchased in twenty uh, two thousand and five, and I believe two thousand and six. Okay, so they're. So the sort of fairly old. Right. It's kind of amazing they're still functioning. So is this saying that um, the digital fingerprint system is coming up that you will be getting that next year through CIP? Is that what this is saying? Okay. You want to, you want to go on to page two first? Oh, I'm control. sorry. Where were we? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, page two, animal control. Yeah. I just added uh, one, two, three, four, five. I think six hours to her salary right now. But you don't have a, 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 a rate increase for her, uh, right? Well, you, you know, she will. Yeah. She'll get uh, oh, something. She'll get she will get something. Oh, yes. okay. But for the animal control, it's a total of $76 for the entire year. Mm -hmm. uh, no change to emergency management, home and security, and the FEMA reimbursements. Mm -hmm. And now we get into the capital improvement. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I had previously asked for. Uh, the cruiser for 2020, the police are set, at least the second car, and two cameras. Um, I thought it'd be better to purchase one camera each year, but I was afraid if we asked for $12,000 and the folks said no, then there's no way for me to get a camera to replace anything for the cars. So that's why we went with one per year and put it in the police budget instead of the capital improvement plan. Mm -hmm. uh, so I moved the digital fingerprint system from 2021 down to 2020. Okay. 
and I gave an explanation about the cruiser and what the aging could recommend three year lease in 2020, as well as equipping it. And then also we have the payment for the second year lease for 2019. So that's a total of 35000 It's actually less than $35,000. $35, so the digital fingerprint system also increases officer safety as opposed to the old uh, print and uh, fingerprint. Uh, only one set taken rather than four. If you're just redundancy, to see more accurate eliminates errors. Uh, eliminates rejections from the FBI, which happen quite frequently, and eliminates ink, mess, and cleaning within the police department. Okay. So we get the three year plan for the police department. Personnel, no additional full-time police officers. Uh, I anticipate a significant change in personnel in the part-time area. Uh, we have uh, some dead weight now, and I'd like to change that. Uh, no increase in improved six part-time positions, and to begin consider adding an admin person to handle data entry and walk-ins, and consider eliminating our uh, volunteers. For, for consistency, to make sure. They well, for consistency, and uh, because they're there, they're there so few hours, they don't grasp everything that needs to be done by that person at that window. But one person does one thing, one does one thing, one does one thing, and the other person does one thing. Mm -hmm. um, so we don't have a chance to open the door to allow someone to walk in and have business done with them. They have to ring the buzzer, and the officer goes out if they're, if they're in the wood of the building. Mm -hmm. So I think in the long run, the officer uh, will officer uh, will offer consistency. And uh, you know, we won't get as many complaints. By the time we go to the police department, the door is always locked. Mm -hmm. so. okay. Vehicles continue leasing uh, new vehicles in 20 and then 21. And then at that point, it's value to determine whether we might be able to skip a year if the mileage remains lower than the current trend. So we don't have vehicles with 125,000 miles, 145,000 miles. And just keep in mind that we do have that additional full-time office who will have be adding mileage to the overall fleet. Uh, long term from equipment, uh, computers. Um, in the email that we received from Tom Bell about changing the Microsoft as well, um, he's also recommending that we update all of our computers downstairs because the new Microsoft 10, uh, one, will be more difficult to install, but also it may not run at peak efficiency with the computers that we have downstairs. Well, how old are your computers downstairs? <sighs> Probably eight or nine years old at this point. So. Uh, the plan is to, to purchase as many as I can with, with surplus from this year so it doesn't affect the overall budget. Mm -hmm. uh, digital speed signs, uh, begin to purchase and install them maybe one a year, and we're thinking of doing something like this. And they range from $2,000 to $5,000, and, and we could uh, certainly uh, probably absorb that in our equipment fund. Uh, what I like about this here is a, a good place to put a sign like this. It's uh, solar powered and it blanks, speed limit. Would be, this would be a great place for beer room, you know, yeah, so with all the issues that we're having right now. Yeah. Yeah. So um, this is less than $1,000. So depending on what the budget looks like this year, I may ask the board to purchase two of these for beer room mm -hmm. uh, for this year. Um, but certainly in the future, I'd like to get at least one or two of these. They're portable, they're, they're, sold, uh, they're sold powered, so we can move them around town mm -hmm. where we're getting issues uh, and uh, complaints of uh, speeding and whatnot. Even though it's happening in every road, but um, but this will certainly remind people to slow down and see it flashing when you approach them. I don't know if you've ever gone through Kittery, but Kittery has several of these, mm -hmm. um, and, and they're downtown. They work. So when you're portable, what do you mean by portable? Are they? I mean, you, they're, they're, mount, they're, mount, they're mount the telephone pole, and you can leave it there for a week or two, or whatever you want. Then you take it up and you move it to another telephone pole, or whatever case. You move it around town to different spots. You're allowed to put something on a telephone pole. As long as we get permission, yes. Okay. And we've never. Uh, They've never said none to us. Mm -hmm. so. uh, bull resistant vest, uh, we're going to begin out of the uniform fund, start replacing the majority of our vests. Uh, they have a lifespan of five years for full time police officers, seven to eight years for part time officers. Tactical gear, we're going to begin to purchase additional tactical vests, helmets, and shields on uh, July 3rd. Myself and Officer Brooks went to Summersworth for a barricaded subject. And I was, we were the only department there that did not have one of these to stand behind. 
So we were delegated to standing on the roadway directing traffic. <laughs> Not that I'm complaining, um, but but certainly we should have at least a couple of these available just in the event that you know, we need them. Mm -hmm. uh, as well so, as helmets. So, um, Sergeant, who is part of the tactical team, right? Yes. He must have it they on have on his when he's doing it with them, though. Not he when does, he's yes. here. Yes. Okay. Yes. And then we're also looking to get some helmets for the for the staff. For, uh, for tactical situations, mm -hmm. um, you know, we've been over with UNH when they've had the, the problems over there with the Red Sox and the Patriots mm -hmm. and, and whatnot, and uh, um, our guys were the only ones standing in line that did not have head, had head protection. So, Are those bulletproof as well? They're bullet resistant. Okay. Bullet resistant. And then in 2000, 2020, looking to purchase uh, the, the last of the four in-camera video systems. And at some point, uh, we'd like to install a digital phone system to record all phone calls coming into and out of the police department. So there is no miscommunication, there are no false claims that someone said something or whatever on the phone that they did not. You're not already taped? No? No. But you take when you call? Yeah, when you, call leave, the yeah. When, you have, when, you leave, when you leave voicemail, yeah. uh, here it's, it's recorded, okay. but once you listen to it, it's erased. Oh. Dispatch records all phone calls there. We don't record anything here. Okay. okay. So that's what that's what the so please run looking. Uh, not, no big significant uh, purchases. So. Have you looked into any like VOIP, like digital recording subscription systems? Like what do you use right now? Is it just a hardwired telephone? Yes. Have you looked? But it is. A, but it is a digital system. It is a digital recording system for a voicemail. That you have right now. Have, no, yeah. have you looked into any like VOIP low cost solutions? No. No, no yeah. No. Any questions there? And then three year plan for repairs and renovations of the police department. You know, certainly I'm getting the impression from folks in town that you know this police department is not gonna happen, at least in probably our lifetime, my lifetime. So having said that, I, know, I think it's time that uh, you know, we need to take a look at this building here and start making the necessary repairs, repainting, and whatever needs to be done to this building. You know, it's been 20, 20 years now, and we have walls downstairs that, that because of water damage, the paint's coming off, the floor, the, uh, the baseboard's coming off, you know, floors need, need to be addressed. So um, you know, if we're not going to be looking elsewhere, then I think we need to start spending some money in this building. Okay, so we do have finally our, our whole team for space needs. Mm -hmm. So you're saying we aren't going to go forward with it? Well, well, no, but you know. Uh... I kind of got the feeling that you have too, because it's the kind of feeling I'm getting around town as well. But I mean. Well, I think we need to, you know, uh, either decide we're going to go forward or, or uh -huh. not. If we're not, then we need to start spending some money on this building here. I agree. And, and you know, start making it look presentable again. Yeah. And I give you a long list. It doesn't include everything, but obviously paint and repair a lot of things. You know, I like to add some insulation to the exterior walls in my office. Um, replace damaged missing ceiling <coughs> tiles. I like to install a vent in the evidence room to, to vent everything outside directly, so that uh, when we have uh, marijuana and other smelly items in there, it's not permeating into the rest of the police department downstairs. It's being directed outside. <laughs> Uh, repair and pave the driveway to the garage doors, uh, finish the garage and bring that up to code. You know, that, that was never completed. Uh, some counters that need to be replaced. There was a desk or two to install a roof over the back door in the HVAC area. Uh, replace our garage doors. Replace windows in the conference room with working windows. Uh, rust and uh, repair rust and paint exterior doors. Eventually replace all lighting with LED and probably to save some Further additional savings, uh, replace all the light switches with motion detector light switches so that uh, you know offices aren't leaving on the light switches on all the time. And then those are some of the minor items. Then we start looking at the, the bigger items, upgrading the building surveillance system, upgrading the phone system. Uh, eventually we're going to have to look at that replacing that generator, and then maybe install a carport out back so the cruisers can park underneath it and move it up. So out back here, yes. So the LED is going to happen. We've already got a quote on it. And fire and highway and transfer stations are going to start immediately. And town hall, including the police, is going to happen 
Well, as soon as you all, we, we need to do rebudgeting to we decide need, yeah, whether we're going to pay for it. We would like right. to do it without um, financing. financing. Sure. So uh, I've got all the pricing for it. So, um, is is there? Go ahead. Is there windows in your conference room? We have two. That's the addition on the back over here, underneath this roof right here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Are they high? They're high, yes. Oh, okay. So and they're, they're uh, vertical windows. Yep. So it's very difficult for someone to stand there and, and look inside because they're high and they're, okay. they're vertical. So. But those are the only ones. You don't have any windows on the other side, right? No, uh, just, just those two. Just those two. And, yeah. then, the and then the lobby, the glass on the lobby door. Anybody have any other questions? No. How so, much is those those uh, for the tactical gear for the vest, helmets, and shields? What is the price tag on that? The I shields know? you're talking anywhere between two, well, actually about uh, fifteen hundred till about an hour, depending what uh, what threat level you get. Yeah. And um, the helmets you're talking probably about five hundred dollars. Okay. Yeah. And the vest. The vests are 800. So is it the same thing as your bulletproof vest? Is? Yes. Oh, okay. So it, it's just a, a more. It's just a, the tactical vest is a more, more sturdy vest. Oh, okay. Um, it generally has a ceramic plate in it, as opposed to this has the the, the Kevlar, which is flexible. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We actually have four of those right now. We have one in the back of each police car. So if the officer on duty uh, that's in that vehicle has a situation, he can grab. That vest and throw it on. The tactical one. The tactical vest, okay. yes. But in the event that we call an additional officer, there's no need to have a couple of additional vests. Mm -hmm. So, so do, is there a possibility of um, matching grants or something with FEMA? Like no, no, really? No. That's your best. Alright. Might be able to get a matching grant for the generator, though. That's right. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. I mean, that's a big expense as well, too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, this is a long list. It is, but it's. I appreciate you pulling together. Can you just give me your email address? Oh, yeah. Well, look, when I get downstairs, I'm going to. Uh, I'll email you that thing that I did about the cheese. So, oh. for all the. For all the I, don't, I don't know what happened to that page. Okay. Stuck. <coughs> okay. So, I'll have that for you. I apologize for not having that. It's at Walmart's Big Top. I don't know if it's J. Welch. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. So, if you have any questions about what I presented, you know where to reach me. Thanks, Bob. I'll have my cell phone and whatnot, so, and you will shortly. Yes, <laughs> thank you. I'll send you over those documents tonight. All right, great. My, my, your email, your card is on my desk at work. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so the only one left is Rec and then, and I'm sorry? Rec and Town. Rec and Town. Yeah. Town. Yeah. All right, so Good day. Thank you. what is our schedule next week? So that's the question is um, for Jessica and Miles. Are you available? So um, there are things coming up that seem to warrant another meeting. And so if you are available on the 3rd, um, the day after Labor Day, Tuesday, next week, we could talk about... We could, I, I can't do anything next week. Yeah. She's out next week. All right. So... Um, I'm fine with missing so I'm not dedicated. You know, if, if you guys have to meet otherwise, I won't be offended. <laughs> Um, to hear to hear Rec, and you can certainly discuss the other budget information you've received. You can think about um, what you want to re um, propose for an across the board increase, things like that. Um, but it would be helpful to do that attached to a regular meeting so that you can handle some purchase orders and things like that. Um, I don't know if Rec's going to be ready by this. And it may not be. Yeah. So I mean, we can certainly talk about. But that the other thing is maybe even later that week because yeah. the ninth is going to be potentially um, with the public hearing short. Right. Maybe we don't know. Yeah. 
So there's certainly not probably, you know, business, regular business meeting, but probably not a lot of opportunity to talk about budget things on the night. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because that is our business meeting. That's it is a business not, that's meeting. Because we have, every other week we have the budget, so um, are we are a little behind, I think, we need to make sure we meet. I'll know more on Thursday um, if we still want to, can, can you meet on Tuesday? Um, I think so. Because planning is canceled. Well, it, it got moved to the other time. Yeah. Yep, I'm, I'm free. Um, I hate to leave you out of budget, though. Yeah, Definitely. I mean, especially the first go around, but if it is, mm -hmm. you know. Um, sure. The other thing is, it could theoretically be brief. It may or may not be rec. It can. Mm -hmm. We can also just sort of touch base on Thursday or Friday and, you know, gauge the need and revisit the idea. But um, three weeks is kind of a long stretch between business meetings at this point. Mm -hmm. Why don't we plan for it? At yeah, least let's, a, plan for let's keep it to an hour, an hour and a half or something. Yeah. We should be able to come in and do um, sign a curtain, you know. Yeah. All, all the stuff that is going to be coming in that have to have signatures anyway, so. Yep. And maybe we'll have some update from Breck, I hope um, we'll have that. And then maybe an update from Caroline. But we won't make any decisions until you come back. Oh, okay. okay. I, I, I want to make sure that she's yeah. part of the whole process. Oh, absolutely. So, um, we'll make sure that, you know, but we can at least look at it. And maybe if there's information that needs to be, uh, more information needs to be come up yeah, you certainly ask questions certainly and get more information. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Absolutely. So. Um, six or six thirty. I can do either. Miles. Yeah, you can do six. Six. Okay. Six. Okay. Um, so that's Tuesday, the day after Labor Day at six. The third. Yes. Okay. Can I ask a question that I should have asked earlier? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if I can because I'm here anymore. But just on the transfer station, mm -hmm. why was the there was one line item that they were pretty highly expended right now, but they were coming down, I think it was MSW. So MSW, because that line really, that, that wasn't necessarily very clear, but right now it's a combined line of MSW and demo together. So it is overexpended because you've got both of them. He's splitting it out, which is why uh, in that bigger oh, okay. worksheet, I knew there was something you'll see that there is no activity with like no history for demo because it's a new line, splitting MSW and yep. demo. Exactly. I understand. So, yeah, I understand. so together it's, you know, like a $6,000 increase, I think, approximately yep. for yep. Yep. combined. Mm -hmm. But it, it shows as a loss on that one line. Got it. Yeah, thank you. I knew it was something. Okay. That's a question.